This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, April the 19th, 2019. It's the birthday of St. Eanflaed in 626 AD in northern England. She was actually a Northumbrian queen who became an abbess in modern-day Whitby in England. She was the daughter of King Edwin and Queen Ethelberg. And she was given in a political marriage to King Oswiu in 642 AD. He died in 670, and after 28 years of marriage to the king, Aenflaed retired to the same abbey founded by St. Hilda of Whitby. After about 10 years there, she was elected abbess and served in that role for the rest of her life. April 19th, across the last 50 years, has given us a trifecta of sociopath-related events. Today was a big day for Charles Manson, David Koresh, and Timothy McVeigh. In 1971, Manson was sentenced to death for his role as a cult leader and chief conspirator in the Tate-LaBianca murders. Manson formed a California cult, which was known simply as the Manson Family. His followers committed a series of crimes, including nine murders in July and August of 1969. He acted as he did in part because he believed in an impending apocalyptic race war. He taught that the murders he ordered would help precipitate that war. Today, in 1971, he was sentenced to death for his crimes, but less than a year later, California abolished the death penalty and Manson's sentence was commuted to life without parole. He died in 2017 at the age of 83 at the California State Prison in Corcoran. Also today in 1993, outside of Waco, Texas, cult leader David Koresh was in the middle of a month-long siege by a joint task force of the FBI and the ATF and the Texas Rangers. It was day 51 at the so-called Branch Davidian Compound, and Koresh believed himself to be a Messiah figure, and about 76 people had left their lives and moved into his fortified compound. The compound also had a stockade of weapons, military ammunition, and survivalist supplies. Koresh had been under surveillance for months for a variety of crimes and concerns. And the FBI and the ATF went to the compound to serve search warrants and arrest warrants. And immediately they came under heavy fire. Four agents and six of the cult members were killed in the firefight. For a month and a half, the news media watched every detail of the compound and the surrounding siege. Today, on day 51, the FBI launched a new assault using tear gas in an effort to get the children inside out safely. A suicide fire was started inside the compound, and by the time the FBI breached it, all but nine of the cult members were dead, including Koresh himself. All in all, 76 cult members died, including 18 children under the age of 10. Autopsies later determined that some of the people were killed due to shoddy construction before the siege. Some died from cyanide poisoning, some died due to gunshot wounds or stabbings, and then the rest died by fire. The aftermath of the event was broad. New policies regarding the use of force by government officials, as well as new policies regarding the stockpiling of weapons by non-U.S. citizens, came into force in Texas and around the country. Also today in 1995, only two years after Waco in Oklahoma City, the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building was bombed, killing 168 people, including 19 children under the age of six. Two men, Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols, loaded a cargo truck with about 5,000 pounds of explosives and parked it at the Federal Building, just under the daycare center. At 9 a.m., the blast went off, destroying about a third of the building and damaging buildings over 16 square blocks. The men claimed that their motive was yet another survivalist versus government event from the 1990s, the 1992 standoff at Ruby Ridge. In all, 168 people died that day and 680 were injured. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.